Hi, I'm Will from Global Geckos. On today's episode of Reptile Basics, we're going to be introducing you to the leopard gecko. So, this is an adult male leopard gecko. They are, in terms of size wise, they tend to grow somewhere between about 6 to 10 inches. 6 inches would be quite a small one. 10 inches is sort of like this guy here. It's about as big as they get, so he's about 25 centimeters. In terms of their, their lifespan, their longevity, they should easily uh, be able to achieve 15 to 20 years, but certainly 30 years plus isn't unheard of for these guys. So they are quite a long lived species, leopard geckos. In terms of their natural environment, leopard geckos are native to sort of India, Pakistan, Afghanistan, that sort of region of the world. And they can be found in a wide variety of habitats, um, anything from sort of almost, um, almost semi-tropical kind of forests right the way through to the more sort of like arid foothills. Um, so rocky, the rocky sort of scrubland areas tends to be where they're most likely to occur. And in terms of their, uh, their general uh, microhabitat preferences, they will spend a lot of the daytime sheltering in amongst sort of like rock crevices and things like that to avoid the heat of the day, but also um, sit in a slightly higher humidity kind of environment. So although they tend to come from quite an arid area, um, they do occur in the more humid um, sort of microhabitats within that within that larger sort of um, that larger environment. When we're thinking about the captive environment for leopard geckos. Um, it has been common practice for people to keep them in sort of a two foot enclosure that's sort of like uh, 24 inches or 60 centimeters by about one and a half foot um, so um, by by sort of 45 centimeters deep and tall these days though thankfully people are beginning to consider keeping them in larger enclosures and it's pretty much commonplace nowadays to keep them in a three foot or a, a 36 inch or 90 centimeter long enclosure um, but certainly um, you know if you've got space for larger than that definitely four foot enclosures five foot enclosures bigger is always going to be better the wild is a large place but certainly we're going to for, for today we're going to talk about um, sort of an environment that's going to be at least sort of like 90 centimeters long by 40 centi uh, 45 centimeters deep and high. You do then need to consider um, making this environment um, as similar as you can to their natural environment. That's often one of the best ways of keeping reptiles. So we need to consider what we're going to do in terms of both the heating and the lighting for them. When we consider the heating and lighting for leopard geckos, you can heat them in a variety of different ways. You could use an under tank heat source such as a heat mat, or you could heat them from above using something like an incandescent basking bowl, a ceramic heater emitter, or what they call a deep heat projector as well. So any of these are going to be an appropriate means so long as you can provide a hot spot within the environment of about 32, 33 degrees and a cool end in the cooler end of the enclosure should be round about sort of 25, 26 degrees so that they have a nice temperature gradient between the two. In terms of heat sources though, do remember they should always be uh, controlled via the means of an appropriate thermostat. So be that a dimming thermostat or a pulse proportional thermostat, dependent upon the heat source that you're using. From a lighting perspective, Although leopard geckos are often regarded as being um, either nocturnal or crepuscular, meaning that they either come out at night or at dawn and dusk, in reality they're slightly more what we would class as cathomeral, which means that they have no fixed activity pattern. So often you'll find if you have a pet leopard gecko and you feed it during the day, it will come out during the day. So because of that, you do need to make sure that they have a good circadian rhythm. That's a good differentiation between daytime and nighttime. And the best way of doing that is by using a full spectrum UV light. So we like to use the Arcadia Shade Dweller lights just because they've been optimized for species such as leopard geckos. And what we'll do is we'll have those on for 12 hours and then off for 12 hours just to replicate that day night cycle and to give our leopard geckos the option to bask and to get some additional UV should they require it. When it comes to decorating our leopard gecko enclosures, what we need to try and do is we need to try and replicate that kind of environment that they come from. So we often aim for a relatively arid environment on the whole, but then we'll always provide them with at least one or two far more humid microclimates. So what we're doing is we're using a rocky, sandy clay type soil throughout the majority of the environment, but then a couple of their hides we're going to fill either with dampened coir 
or dampen moss so that the leopard geckos can choose to go into those environments should they wish to to seek out those higher humidity refugia within their within their within their total environment other things which we often like to incorporate into their environment are low-lying rocks um, bits of bits of wood so logs branches things like that then you can even in, introduce things like leaf litter if you wish just so that it, in, it provides further environmental enrichment as it's additional things for the leopard geckos to go foraging in when they're looking for food in terms of the provision of water we always provide them with a small water bowl at the cool end of the environment they don't necessarily drink a, a considerable amount but you will occasionally see them go and have a few sort of like licks from their water bowl so we would always stress the importance of providing them access to water Dietary wise, leopard geckos are purely insectivorous. In the wild, they certainly may attempt to eat smaller lizards or potentially even, I suppose, rodents, um, certainly smaller vertebrate prey if they could encounter it. But the vast majority of their diet is always gonna be made up of insects and arthropods. So in the wild, they are known to eat a lot of spiders and even certain, certainly scorpions in parts of their range. But in captivity, most of the time, we tend to feed them on crickets and locusts as a general staple food source with occasional things such as Dubai or cockroaches. And then they can have worms as an occasional treat. So that's things like mealworms, calci worms, wax worms. We don't use those as a general staple food source though because they always tend to be quite high in their fat content. When they're young, we tend to feed them more or less every day and then we decrease the frequency of feeding as they age. As you can see, leopard geckos have a nice fat tail and that is their food store. That is their, that is their fat reserves there. So they don't need to eat every day. They can go extended time frames without any food whatsoever. But certainly uh, obesity can be an issue in captivity if they're fed on a diet high in, uh, high in some of those worms and those other treat type foods. When it comes to supplementation, again, like all reptiles, they do require additional dietary supplementation of calcium. If you're using the correct lighting, you should only require to provide minimal um, additional dietary D3, if any at all. Um, but certainly other trace minerals are going to be beneficial to provide at the same time as that calcium supplement. In order to administer that, you simply dust the live food with it prior to feeding. You can also leave a small dish of calcium supplement in their environment for them. But we've found that it's unlikely that they'll use it with the exception of egg laying females who may specifically seek out um, uh, sort of calcium just from a bowl or a dish. From an interactive perspective, leopard geckos are one of the best sort of uh, pet reptiles for interaction. I wouldn't necessarily go so far as to say that they enjoy it, but they certainly tolerate it a lot better than most. So as you can see, this guy, he's been pretty calm throughout the entire time that I've been talking. And they're certainly, they are a species which can, can be handled on occasion. So a few minutes at a time, a couple of times a week, that's not gonna cause them any kind of undue distress. Um, but as with all animals, do, do make sure that you handle them with respect and there's no, there's no sort of real requirement to, to restrain them whilst you're handling them. You can allow them to, sort of to, to freely walk between your hands. That's about all we've got time for today. Um, so that's been the Leopard Gecko. Uh, do remember to follow us, do remember to subscribe, and if there's any other facts or, or figures that you'd like to know about Leopard Geckos, don't forget to drop us a message in the comments.